Welcome to today's three-minute catechism challenge. Refresh the knowledge of your Catholic faith with only a short commitment every day. With these short videos, beautifully animated in a hand-drawn style, learning about the faith has never been so engaging. This is a wonderful opportunity for parents to take on their godly responsibility to ensure that their children understand who he is. All who participate faithfully will have a good foundation of knowledge of their Catholic faith. Today's topic is about how we can understand the Trinity. How can we understand the Trinity? Naturally, we can't. The Holy Trinity exceeds our intellect. St. Augustine tried to understand, and the outcome actually isn't that bad. Augustine begins his reflection here. The Bible says, man is made in the image and likeness of God. Now, since God is a trinity, it might be fair to argue that the likeness of God in man is also some sort of trinity. And if we can locate that likeness, it may help us to better understand its source. So goes the proposal of St. Augustine. Now, where would we look for that image and likeness of God in man? Not in the body. The body isn't that special. Well, then, we have to look in the soul. And that seems right, for the soul is something spiritual, just as God is pure spirit. When we look at the soul, and in particular its higher and rational part, we find the interesting interplay between the intellect and the will. So what is happening here? When I perceive an object through my senses, then my intellect forms a mental image of the object, a concept. If I see an apple, for instance, then I will have a mental image and likeness of the apple in my mind. Now, if this concept of the apple is something good and desirable, then the will inclines me towards the apple. This is how interaction between the intellect and the will works. The intellect forms an image or concept, and if the thing is perceived as good, the will inclines us to love that object. Let's leave the apples and go a step further. What if we don't reflect on some fruit, but on ourselves? Well, the intellect forms an image of ourselves, and if the result is good, the will inclines us to love ourselves. Okay, now it gets exciting. Let us apply this mental process to the Trinitarian nature of God. God the Father knows Himself, thereby forming a perfect image of Himself. This perfect image of the Father is the Son. What is the difference between the two? The only difference between the Father and the Son is that the one generates while the other is generated. Now, the Father knows Himself in the Son, and the Son in the Father. Because both are goodness and truth itself, they incline towards each other in love. And this is the procession of the Holy Spirit, who is indeed the very love between the Father and the Son. This is how St. Augustine explains the Trinitarian life of God. But even the learned Augustine knew that ultimately, God is greater than any of our thoughts. And this is illustrated by the following story told about the saint. It is said that one day Augustine was standing on the beach contemplating the mystery of God. Then a little child came by. He dug a hole and ran back and forth from the ocean, trying to fill the hole with water. After a while, Augustine asked the child what he was trying to do. The child responded, I'm emptying the sea into this pool. When the saint pointed out the impossibility of this undertaking, the child replied, I will sooner empty the sea into this pool than you will manage to get the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity into your head. Touché, thought St. Augustine, and smiled. Don't forget to get your copy of the Catechism of the Catholic Church at the Ave Maria bookstore here at Guadalupe Media while supplies last. Useful for this challenge as well as Father Mike Schmidt's Catechism in a Year, starting in January 2023. Thank you for partaking in today's 3-Minute Catechism Challenge. 
We look forward to your comments and engagement in the discussion boards.